Good morning, everybody. Okay, it's uh, my pleasure to have you for uh, the second poetry class. And uh, as you see, uh, today we're having here the class in this comfortable place, which I think is very suitable for poetry class. Uh, as the norms of each class, uh, I would like first to start by uh, having your daily report. So I need one student to come here and to deliver her daily report. Today, I'm asking who is going to volunteer. Next time, I'm going to pick out randomly. OK? Good. Please come here. You can come here. For the bells were rung, for the songs were sung, poetry class was announced to be open. Since the class was crowded and the apprehension was founded, everyone's compliment was raised as often. As some poetic terms have been inculcated, formatting demands to be updated, the abstracted ears will be no more taken. From having definitions and the elements of aesthetics shared and the figures of speech were asked to be prepared to the video tape our class would be chosen. To those who are concerned about the matter of marks, you will have your test while having some snacks. You will have it done even you have no pen. Okay. Uh, I think this is very amazing. It's nice to have uh, such a report in uh, poetic form. And this shows how, uh, you know, some of you, right from the very beginning, are uh, interested in poetry. And this personally thrills me. So, good. Uh, I don't want like to ask for another report. But later, as I told you, I might pick out randomly. As today, as you see, we have poetry. It says, like, this is, uh, you know, class number two. Uh, you see, the title is, we'll continue this series, like, until next week, reading and talking about poetry. Uh, I would like uh, to start by summarizing what I'm going to say in this class. So at the beginning, there will be a summary of the previous class. Then we're going to talk about poetry, uh, and then uh, reading poetry. OK, uh, let's see. What was last class? I think last class, we uh, tried to elicit your response to the question I gave you earlier. What is poetry? And I was uh, very happy when you came up with like different uh, definitions, mainly the uh, famous uh, Wordsworthian definition. Poetry was spontaneous overflow of powerful feelings. And we uh, try to uh, look into that uh, definition, and we realized how it was paradoxical. And uh, the, late, you know, the paradox, which was uh, you know, uh, there in that statement, shows that how poets are crafts, craftsmen. Uh, like they, ha they do a lot of craftsmanship when they write poetry. And uh, then we talk like, uh, about other definitions, and those definitions made us uh, uh, like able to demarcate like poetry as a different genre. We started to talk about uh, rhyme, rhythm, uh, assonance, uh, alliteration, etc. So these are the features like which we might be interested in while having this course. I know this course, as I told you uh, from the very beginning, this course uh, is a course uh, in reading poetry, but it is a course in like reading this poetry in the context of its uh, you know, culture, in the context of its history. But as you see, uh, it is difficult, and this is what will take us to uh, this uh, you know, point, is talking about poetry. It is difficult to talk about poetry in a very uh, 
impulsive manner. I mean, we have to be aware what you know we are talking, what language we are talking. Right, talking about poetry. In fact, there are two ways we can talk about poetry. I don't know, like uh, when I uh, ask you to talk about a poem, you might say, okay, I like this poem, uh, it's very interesting, it appeals to me. Uh, another student say, okay, I like this metaphor. Now, I want you to bring uh, these two things, like, uh, when you say this is a metaphor, if you identify that this is a metaphor, it means like you realize that there is a specialized language in poetry. So when you talk about poetry, uh, you have to be aware of this special language. But when we talk about the meaning, you know, we are using a general language. So if you talk about a certain metaphor, Okay, it's good to realize that this is a metaphor, uh, but it is not enough to identify the metaphor. You have to say how this metaphor serves the meaning, you know, in a special context. I know this is like very abstract, and you need uh, some examples. Okay, now if you look at this example, uh, you know, words, words, it says. The city now doth like a garment wear the beauty of the morning. If we look closely at this line, we see that there is a kind of comparison. What is he comparing? Can anybody tell me what is he comparing? Is he comparing something to something else? The city now doth like a garment were the beauty of the morning. Yes? So the city is wearing a garment. What is the garment? What is the garment exactly here? It is compared to the beauty of the morning. So this is what we call a simile. For example, my friend is like a lion, you know? My sister is like an angel or the moon. This is a kind of simile in which we compare one thing with another thing. Now here, as you see in this poem, Wordsworth compares the beauty of the morning to a garment which is dressed. Now, when we uh, want to talk about poetry, I think we should use both languages, the specialized and the general. So we have to say, like, and in this line, it's very important to see uh, how this simile expresses the extent of happiness the people in this city enjoy at this moment. Okay? So here, you're mixing between the specialized language with the general language. So this is what I expect you later when we are doing, uh, when we are reading some poems, uh, we are going like to uh, you know, mix between the specialized language and you know, the general language. Okay, uh, now we're going to move to another point, sorry. This is another example. Also, uh, it shows us how we can mix. Uh, Dylan Thomas uh, is a famous uh, you know, English poet. In one of his uh, poem entitled A Grief Ago, he was lamenting uh, you know, uh, the death of his you know, like, wife. And you know, he used this like a grief ago. Like he started the, the, uh, the poem by saying, a grief ago. Now, it's very you know, interesting because do we say in ordinary language, a grief ago? So here, this is 
very poetic. It is very poetic by the norm of its deviation from the normal use of language. If we look at this a grief ago, usually we say one day ago, two days ago, three days ago, but we never say a grief ago. Uh, and like a grief is like a day. So there is here a kind of metaphor. It's a metaphor. Uh, you have here what we call syntactic deviation, because in grammar, we almost say a day ago, two days ago, three days ago. And we have semantic deviation. Why? Because grief is being compared you know, to days. So here, like the metaphor shows how the poet is obsessed with this sense of sadness and agony. OK? You see here, again, this is another example of how we can combine, uh, combine both you know, uh, specialized language and general language. OK, reading poetry. This course, or in this course, we're going to read a lot of poets. And we are going, as uh, we explained in the outline, we're going to respond to the poets. But we should be aware of what we are doing when we read poetry. I know, like, through my experience as a student and even as a teacher, the first time you look at the poem, you become a little bit repulsive, aversive. You don't want to read, you know? It's, what is this, you know? And I want you to dismiss this feeling. I want you uh, to approach the poem with, uh, you know, a sense of alacrity, you know, psychological readiness. I want you to be open-minded, to look at the poem and, like, uh, to read like the poem aloud, as you see here, uh, like reading the poem aloud is very important. You have to read the poem aloud many times, just not one time. And uh, you should vary, like sometimes you read it slowly, you concentrate on words. Uh, then uh, you uh, vary the speed, you speed up like to make it like uh, sound like what it was meant by the poet himself. Uh, some uh, po uh, some people can record the poem. I did this many times, and it was like lovely. Uh, you can also uh, get nowadays. I think we are blessed because we have all these electronic resources, so we can harness these resources by downloading, uh, you know, uh, some poems by native speakers or even by the poets themselves. Yeah. Now, uh, let's give an example about reading a poem. How to read a poem. Now, this poem, as you see, some of you might not say it's a poem. You know, because, does, is it a poem? Yeah. Like, look at you, you are surprised. And I think a good poem you know, is the poem that induces in us a sense of surprise. Some might gloss over this poem by saying, for the love middle age couple playing tennis. When they go home and, uh, you know, uh, when they go home, the net will still be between them. It is like reading, uh, you know, a statement without uh, just like a variation, without stressing. But if we have to read this as if it were a poem, and I think it is a poem, so how would you like to read it? Should I give you uh, one minute, and then you uh, try reading it? OK? I need a daring student who would like to come and say, yes? OK, uh, I need another student, all right. Yes? OK, go ahead. Yeah, baby. 
Or is it a poem which holds in itself some feeling of acrimony? Because, you know, here, as you see, it is not very, is it friendly? Huh? Like, how do you know it's not friendly? How do you know it's not friendly? Yes? Yeah, what do you mean for the love? Yeah, like 40 love is a friendly relationship. Okay? But, you know, in tennis, love means zero. So, I don't know, look, whether you have, yeah, 40 love. So, it no, might, I yes? I think they're not friendly because the, the women, they talk about the, the network between them. Uh -huh. So, yes, there is a barrier. You know, the poem says the network will be still there. And I, I, again, if we look at how the words are patterned, like how the words are fragmented, we see that this is like a very, uh, you know, unhealthy relationship, you know, because there is a separation. So, I don't want to go uh, deeper in, uh, like, to this poem. I'll be giving you uh, another example of how we should read the poem and how we should look at the words, the certain patterns of the word, and then how to form these questions. These questions will help us to reach certain thematic, or I would say possible thematic meaning, because I don't want like to be, uh, you know, just like saying this is about this. So as we said, you know, poetry has multiple meanings. It is not referential, but rather representational. Okay. So let's move to the second example. And I, I bet you're going to find it as funny as, even more funny than the first one. Good. Uh, we need somebody to read this. OK? More polemic? Yeah, you started laughing. Huh? I don't know. It might be chemistry. So look here. You laugh. Is anybody afraid? Are you afraid? Okay. Okay, very good. Like, do you want to read it? Go ahead. Ah, good. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay. It's fun, isn't it? Yeah. But like, when you read the poem, uh, you didn't feel it. You didn't imbue it. You know what I mean? Imbue it. Charge it with any sentiment. So you were reading as if you were reading like a piece of news. So reading poetry requires that we put some sentiments. We put some feelings. Okay? So is everybody like going to add like feelings, sentiments? Yeah, come on. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh -huh. Yes? I know it's funny. So let me just like read it. An an chi chi. An an chi chi. Chi chi chi. An an. Chi chi. An an. Chi an. Chi an. Chi an. Chi an. Chi an. An chi. An chi. An chi. An chi. An. Chi an. An chi. An chi. An chi an. An chi an chi an chi an chi chi an an chi chi an an chi 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 an an chi 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 an 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 chi 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 
Chi chi chi chi chi chi. Huh? Very funny. You like it? Oh, look here. Thank you. You started to like poetry. And is anybody worried? Thank you. Nobody's worried. Do you want me to bring this in the exam and to ask you what is this poem about? <laughs> but look at me like I interacted with the poem. And as you felt at the end of the poem, you know, it was a little bit sad. Why? Because as you see, an an an, you know, it's taking side and the chi 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 is taking side. So we might say, hey, what is this poem about? Okay? Let's guess, you know, for fun, what this poem might be about. Because, you know, in this course, poetry course, uh, I don't want, like, you, uh, like, to end the poem by saying this poem is about. It might be about. It might be about this. It might be about that. And sometimes, like, when we... Uh, reach the intended meaning of the poem, we might, you know, uh, lose the poem. We might lose the beauty of the poem. So I think poets would be very happy when they see that their poems spawn, generate multiple meanings. I met some poets, and when I uh, started, like, uh, to interpret certain words, they started, like, to be amazed. Ah, I didn't think of that. They were very happy. So I think even for us, like when we look, yes, we have to uh, figure out different meanings. What do you think? What is it about? Huh? Yes? Yeah, it could be two Chinese, and uh, chi chi, you know, they are fighting with each other. Very good, thank you. Could be? Yes? Yeah, it could be a conflict between two friends, you know, Khalid and his friend, and uh, uh, chi chi. And they are doing this. It could be yes. Huh? Could be. Yeah. Thank you. It could be between two countries. Like you know, they are fighting. They are always in conflictual relation. Like what happened between Iran and Iraq. Thank you very much. Huh? It's a church. A, a child. Like uh, it could be a nursery rhyme. Uh -huh. Chi chi, yeah. uh -huh. like chi chi, chi chi, and uh, 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 good, thank you. Yes? Ah, a couple, a wife and husband, yeah. fighting each other? Yeah. Uh, uh, chi chi. You know, they keep, like their life is full of wrangling dispute, you know? It could be like they are not on good terms. Ah, uh, good? Yes? Maybe someone who suffered from flu. Suffer from? Flu. flu. Yeah, very good. I, I haven't thought of that. It could be, Achi. And then, Achi, you know, like keep, you know, doing this. And uh, there is no doctor like to prescribe medicine for him. Good. Thank you. But like, it's very interesting to hear maybe. I want to ask what made you reach this? Like when you say maybe it's about this. Is it the sound? Is it the word on the page? Is it the arrangement? So what makes you come to this interpretation? Yeah? The way the sound itself? Thank you. The sound? The words like am and chi, how they sometimes the words are reciprocal and sometimes they are not. When I say reciprocal, like you see am, am, chi, chi. They reciprocate. They reciprocate, they change, you know. The communication is reciprocal. I say good morning, you say good morning. But if I say good morning and you stop, there is no reciprocation or reciprocity. Sorry. Uh, so it's not reciprocal. Okay? Good. Yes? The number of the words. Yes? Yeah, the repetition is, uh, you know, like the number of the lines. Uh, okay. What does the repetition tell you like? That this is uh, what? What what what, uh, what interpretation did you come up with? Uh, two countries because you know we have like an and chi. 
and all the time they are repeated. Yeah, that's why. So this duality of like, because we have two words, this duality thought you that this might be a conflict between two countries, or you know, a conflict, uh, you know, between a man and a woman, you know, uh, or a friend and uh, another friend, hmm? mother and daughter. I don't think a mother and daughter would suffer such, you know, a relationship. Uh, the mother-daughter is very intimate, matriarchal relationship, you know? Uh, the happiest uh, creature in the world would be the mother when she sees her daughter, you know? So uh, we're not talking about this. Good. Have you thought of another, like, meaning, you know, rather than this? Somebody told me yesterday, I see the word chain, which is negative. See? And like this uh, led me to think, yes, is the poem positive or negative? Okay? Is it positive or negative? So again, as you see, these questions are very important. We ask questions, who is speaking to whom? What is this about? And why are the words are arranged in this way? Why, you know, for example, the beginning is different from the end. Look at the beginning, you know, the arrangement is different. At the beginning, like, you know, the an and the chi are interchangeable. But here, you see, you see everybody is taking side. So this might make us come to the conclusion that this is, you know, a negative, you know? Uh, it is a conflictual relationship which ended uh, by this crisis. There is a sense of crisis here, okay? So it could be like a crisis in, uh, you know, a family relation between a husband and a woman, between a country and another country, you know? I don't know, it might have different meanings. But some, some student told me, don't you think this is about a jolting, a car jolting in the morning? You know, ah, ah, chi, chi, you know? So I was amazed by uh, the number of interpretations the students uh, gave to this poem. And they started to talk. Look here. You know, I think this is about this because of this and that. And this is what I like the students, you know, to do when we are reading our poems. I don't want you to talk about the tropes, I mean, the figures of speech in isolation of the meaning. So usually, there should be this, you know, merging, this, you know, connection between spe specified or specialized language and general language. But let me uh, perhaps uh, put an end to your sense of surprise because of this poem by revealing the real context. Do you think this is a poem? Because, huh? How do you think it's a poem? Why is it a poem? Yes, the arrangement, the way it is patterned. Yes, it is a poem, uh, but as you see, it is incomprehensible poem. And, uh, you know, it needs some interpretation. Sometimes we might ask, who is the poet? What is the title? Nobody asked me a question like this. Why? Who is the poet? You know? Is he Chinese? Is he English? You know? When was the poem written? These are legitimate questions. What is this poem about? Who's the poet? Who is speaking to whom? When was the poem? Should I answer you some of these questions? OK, this poem was written by an English poet named George Macbeth. When was it written? It was written in 1968. Yeah, not long time ago, so last century. So we're talking about not traditional poetry, not Shakespearean poetry, like the poetry we are going to study, you know, next week. Uh, we're we're talking about very postmodern, very, you know, cryptic, very polemic poetry, you know, cryptic. It's not clear, you know, uh, but it's funny, you see, and it's not difficult. It was written during the peak of the Cold War 
the war between the Western Khan, led by America, and the Eastern Khan, led by the Soviet Union during that time. Okay. Uh, during that year, like the two countries, the, I mean, uh, Russia in particular, the Soviet Union, and England started to talk to each other. So they started to have what we call in politics some, you know, rapprochement attempts to rapproach, like to, you know, become close together. So they started talking, they started visiting each other, uh, exchanging visits, having banquets. But what happened, gradually, this relation started to, to be strained, to be weakened. And it ended with this crisis. So the poet, like the English poet, wanted to record that experience. And as we said in the previous lecture, you know, poets respond their own ways, you know, to daily experiences. Like this is a daily experience. Like he responded by, you know, uh, writing this poem. But what did he do, you know, in order, how did he, like here the question is, how we encode our experience. I think he encoded his experience uh, by just having these two uh, words. He looked at the zoo of uh, London. There was a panda animal called Chi. And the zoo of Moscow, there was another panda called An. So he thought it might be wonderful, a good idea, to represent this situation or this crisis situation you know, in politics by having this you know, funny and interesting patterning. Okay? I know like some of you are not happy now. Why? Because we narrowed like the poem to the intended meaning of the poet. And I think the poet would not be very happy as well. So uh, I think in this course, I'm going to give you space, freedom to express yourself, uh, like to figure out different interpretations to any poem, even like the well-established themes of certain poems we are going to study. This course is to make you widen your critical you know, perception. Uh, we are not going to rule out certain interpretation and say, that's it, no. So, uh, I mean, when we read poems, you uh, might, for example, uh, like disagree with us, but the most important thing is like to bring together this specialized language and the language, uh, okay, uh, the general language. Okay, uh, any uh, questions so far? Okay. Good. Uh, so next time, we're going uh, to read, to start the course by reading Sir Thomas Wyatt and his poem, Who's a Lost to Hunt? But in order to prepare, I told you, you should uh, read something about the historical background. I left uh, for you and the reader in the pamphlet, uh, you know, a biography about the poet, something about courtly love, because it's very important uh, to know what is courtly love, and then to read the poem. And before pinning your response, it is very important like to read the poem several times. You know? I don't know how would you read it, but I don't want you to read it like as if you were reading a newspaper. You know? You might read it in different ways until the poem makes a sense. And after that, you have to start writing your response. I know that your initial response uh, might not be deep, but it is a response which I would uh, like evaluate and perhaps develop in the class, okay? So somebody might say, what should we write? You can uh, like say, okay, uh, like after having uh, enough background about the life of the poet, 
and you know, uh, after understanding that he was a famous courtier, I, wa I, wa I became more interested in, you know, reading his poetry. And when I read this poem, uh, you know, Who's the Lost Han, I started like to see uh, like something different. I started to see how the poet was frustrated, disappointed because of this and that. You see what I mean? And uh, I would uh, see this. You can bring it like, uh, you know, hard copy, and at the same time prepare a soft copy because we might put this on the page. So until then, I would like, I wish you good luck and thank you very much for listening to me. Okay.